I bet you've been there. You've got those incredible layers in your coupe, absolute machines like the Ice Browns, Highline Browns, or Lomans. They are flawless. They drop an egg every single day, they're docile, they don't eat you out of house and home, and they produce like crazy. They are literally the golden goose of your operation. And then, that entrepreneurial gear in your brain starts turning. You think, hey, if these hens are so amazing, why am I still cutting checks to the hatchery for new chicks? I'll just throw a rooster in there, get my own fertile eggs, toss them in my tabletop incubator, and boom, I'll have thousands of these super layers for free. I just hacked the system. Sounds like the deal of the century, right? It seems like the most logical move to save cash and become self-sufficient. Well, I hate to break it to you, but if you do that, you are about to make the most common and most expensive mistake in modern poultry farming. You are about to flush your money and your time right down the drain. The daughters of your best hens are useless. I'm not giving you personal opinions today. I'm gonna break this down with hard numbers, biology, and cold hard facts on why trying to breed the offspring of industrial hybrids is the fastest way to bankrupt your farm, kill your profit margins, and fill your run with birds that eat like queens but lay like freeloaders. If you are thinking about putting those brown eggs into an incubator, stop. Listen to this first, because I'm about to save you years of failure and frustration. Welcome back. Let's get down to business. The problem starts because, as humans, we intuitively think biology works like a photocopier. We think if we have a champion hen, and we give her a champion rooster, the offspring will automatically be champions. And in the wild, sometimes it works that way. But in the high-precision poultry industry, it does not work that way. You have to understand exactly what you have walking around in your coop. That red hen you bought, that commercial layer you admire so much, is not a breed. Burn this into your brain. It is not a breed. It is a finished product. It is what we call in genetics an F1 hybrid. What does F1 mean? It stands for filial 1. It is the first generation resulting from crossing two pure, closed, and totally distinct genetic lines. Imagine this like a strictly guarded industrial recipe, like the formula for Coca-Cola. The genetics company takes Sire Line A, which has been selected for decades for certain traits, and takes Dam Line B, which has a completely different genetic code. When they cross them, your hen is born, the F1. That F1 hen is perfect because she possesses what we call 100% hybrid vigor. She has the absolute best of the father and the absolute best of the mother combined into one body. She is like an Olympic athlete designed in a lab to run a marathon every single day. Everything in her is calibrated. Her body weight, her feed conversion ratio, and her ovulation capacity. But here is the trap that nobody explains to you at the feed store. That hen is the end of the genetic road. She is designed exclusively to lay table eggs for consumption, not fertile eggs for reproduction. Why? Because when you try to breed that F1, you enter what I call the genetic lottery from hell. Let's dive into this without getting bored with high school biology, but if you don't get this, you're going to lose money. It all comes down to the laws of inheritance. When you have your F1 hen, her genes are arranged in perfect pairs. Let's say her code is AB. Part A comes from the dad, part B comes from the mom. Together, A and B make that production magic you see in the nesting box every morning. But when that hen creates an egg to reproduce, she cannot pass that full AB package to her offspring. Nature forces her to split her genetic load in half. She has to break that perfect package. In some eggs, she will send only genetics A, and in others, she will send only genetics B. And if you put a rooster over her, let's say he's also a hybrid or a purebred, he's going to send his own random half into the mix. Here's where the absolute chaos begins. When you cross an F1 with another bird to get the F2 generation, the grandkids of the original line, a genetic explosion called segregation occurs. Instead of getting daughters identical to the mother, you are going to get a random, messy mix. You're gonna see chicks of all colors and shapes. Some will come out white, some dark red, some spotted. Some will have feathered legs, some won't. Some will be big and heavy, others small and frail. And maybe you, looking at this with a hobbyist's eye, will say, hey, that's cool, I've got variety in the barn. My friend, in this business, variety is not cool. Variety is inefficiency. The visual variability, seeing different colored feathers, is just the tip of the iceberg. What should really scare you is the internal variability, the stuff you can't see until it's too late. That genetic lack of uniformity directly affects the bird's productive organs. Some of those second-generation hens will start laying at 18 weeks, like their mother. But others, their sisters, won't drop their first egg until week 26 or even week 30. Some will lay big, commercial-grade eggs. Others will lay tiny peewee eggs that nobody wants to buy. 
Some will eat a quarter pound of feet a day, which is ideal, but others will inherit the voracious appetite of their heavy grandparents and eat a third of a pound or more. You have just destroyed the uniformity of your business. And remember this, without uniformity, there is no profitability. You cannot manage a flock where every animal behaves differently. Let's crunch the numbers because I know you care about your wallet. Let's run a real financial simulation. Imagine you bought 100 F1 ISA Brown pullets from a certified hatchery. The upfront cost is high, sure. You had to buy them, ship them, and raise them. But in exchange, you get a flock that gives you on average 320 eggs per hen per year. They all eat about 0.25 pounds of feed a day, and they all lay eggs of a similar size. It runs like a Swiss watch. Now imagine you decide to save money. You refuse to pay the price for the chicks and decide to hatch 100 daughters from those hens. You create your F2 generation. Your upfront cost is practically zero. You just paid for electricity for the incubator and your time. You feel like a financial genius. You think you beat the system, but six months go by. The hens grow up, and reality starts punching you in the face. First, the drop in production. That F2 generation no longer has hybrid vigor, that extra energy boost the mother had. It got lost in the cross. Instead of the 320 eggs the mother laid, the average of this new batch will tank. Maybe, with luck, you'll get 200 or 220 eggs a year. You are losing 100 eggs per hen per year. Multiply that by 100 hens. That is 10,000 eggs less per year. Do the quick math in your head. How much is 10,000 eggs worth in your local market? At $4 or $5 a dozen, that's thousands of dollars you just flushed away to save on the cost of a chick. Second critical point, skyrocketing feed costs. Because the genetics got scrambled, many of those F2 hens will inherit the body size of the grandparents or great-grandparents, which are usually heavy breeds like the old-school Rhode Island Red or Plymouth Rock. These are big birds. They have a lot of bone and muscle structure. The result? You'll have hens in your barn weighing 6 or 7 pounds that need to eat way more feed just to stay alive. But genetically, they've lost the ability to lay daily. They are biological machines perfect for converting your cash into manure. They eat like hogs and lay like pigeons. That will bankrupt any farm in a matter of months. And the third point, unsellable eggs. Shell quality, color, and size become irregular. You're going to get misshapen eggs, eggs with fragile shells that crack before they get to the customer, eggs with pale colors that the market rejects. Your customers, who are used to the standard quality of the F1 mother, are going to complain. You will lose customers, and winning back an unhappy customer is almost impossible. The financial summary is brutal. What you saved at the beginning by not buying quality chicks, you are going to pay back 10 times over throughout the year in wasted feed and eggs that were never laid. The F1 pullet is expensive, it's true but it's an investment that pays for itself with production. The daughter chick, the F2, is free up front, but it's a constant silent leak in your wallet that bleeds you dry a little every day until you realize the math doesn't add up. Now it's natural to ask with some suspicion, is this a conspiracy? Do the big companies do this on purpose to force me to buy from them forever and make me dependent? The honest answer is complex, it's a yes and a no. Yes, it is a brilliant and protected business model. It's called biological patent protection. Giant companies like Hendrix Genetics or EW Group invest millions of dollars and decades of research into developing those pure lines, the grandparents. They sell you the final product, the F1, but they jealously guard the recipe, the parents and grandparents. By selling you an animal that cannot be faithfully copied, they secure their future market. It's the same model used by hybrid seed companies in agriculture, like with corn. But the answer is also no, it's not just corporate greed. It's because it is the only biological way to guarantee extreme and consistent quality. To get a hen that lays over 300 eggs a year, you are obligated to cross two genetically distant lines. That genetic distance is what creates that explosion of energy in the daughter. It is biologically impossible to have a hen that is purebred and, at the same time, has the explosive performance of a modern industrial hybrid. Nature forces you to choose. Either you have genetic stability, like in a heritage breed, or you have maximum production performance, like in an F1 hybrid. You cannot have both in the same bird and expect it to reproduce the same way. It's a law of life. So partner, I don't want to leave you with just bad news and problems. You already know that breeding the daughters of hybrids is a massive mistake. So what are your real alternatives if you want to be profitable and not go broke trying? You have two very clear paths and you need to pick one today. The first path is the professional path. If your business is selling table eggs and you live off your profit margins, stop playing geneticist. 
Accept the cost of the day-old chick as just another operating expense, just like you accept the cost of feed or electricity. Buy your batch of Isa Browns, Lomans, or whatever brand you prefer. Exploit them to the max for their 80 or 90 weeks of productive life. Take care of them, feed them well. And when production drops due to age, sell them as stewing hens and buy a new, certified batch. It's the least romantic model, it's boring. But it is the only one that guarantees you 300 plus eggs per bird and the profitability you need to make a living from this. Stick to what you know. The second path is the sustainable breeder path. If you absolutely refuse to depend on the big hatcheries, if you want total sovereignty over your farm and want to hatch your own chicks come hell or high water, then you have to change your chicken. You cannot use commercial hybrids. You have to get heritage breeds or stabilized synthetic breeds. I'm talking about getting the true Rhode Island Red, the Plymouth Rock, the Sussex, the Australorp. The advantage of this path is that the offspring of an Australorp are Australorps. They maintain the quality and characteristics of the parents. You can breed your own replacements forever without the genetics degenerating into chaos. But there is a price to pay, and you must be aware of it. They will never lay 320 eggs like the industrial bird. A good heritage breed, well cared for, will give you 200, 220, maybe 250 eggs if it's an exceptional line. The strategy here is different. You accept having fewer eggs to sell, but you completely eliminate the cost of buying chicks every year. For backyard economies, for family homesteads, or specific niche markets, this works wonders. But to compete on price with the industry? It's very tough. What you cannot do, under any circumstances, is try to create Frankenstein's monster, wanting the mass production of the industrial hen with the reproductive capacity of the heritage breed. That does not exist. It is a fantasy. Also, there is a hidden factor in breeding the second generation that almost nobody mentions, health and disease resistance. The F1 mother is tough thanks to that hybrid vigor we talked about. But her offspring, the F2s, by losing that perfect genetic combo, usually hatch with weaker immune systems. I have seen entire farms collapse because the farmer decided to hatch his own chicks from layers. At first, everything looks fine, but at the first cold snap, the first heat wave, or the presence of a common bacteria, that batch of daughters starts getting sick. Mortality spikes. You spend a fortune on antibiotics and vitamins trying to save birds that genetically don't have the strength to survive. Is it worth risking the biosecurity of your entire farm to save a few bucks on buying the chick? The answer is a resounding no. You also have to consider time. The most valuable resource you have isn't money, it's time. Raising a pullet from hatch until she lays her first egg takes between 5 and 6 months. That is 6 months of feeding, watering, vaccinating, and caring without seeing a single dime in return. If you invest those 6 months and those resources into a certified F1 chick, you know with mathematical certainty that when she hits week 18 or 20, she will start paying back that investment with eggs. You have a genetic guarantee. But if you invest those same six months and those same resources into a mutt daughter chick you hatched at home, you are gambling. You are playing Russian roulette. She might turn out okay, she might not. And most likely, you will discover, after wasting half a year of feed, that this hen won't even cover her own costs. You will have lost six months of your life that you are never getting back. In summary, folks, that commercial layer hen you have there is like a Formula One race car. It is a precision machine. Enjoy it, take care of it, squeeze every bit of performance out of it, sell her eggs to the whole neighborhood. But do not try to take that Formula One car apart in your garage to build another one with loose parts, because you're going to end up with a vehicle that guzzles gas like a semi-truck and moves at the speed of a tricycle. Poultry genetics is an exact science of numbers and probabilities. It is not a game of chance or good intentions. If you want to play the lottery, buy a ticket at the gas station. But with your animal's feed, with your time, and with your family's profitability, you do not gamble. I hope this information has opened your eyes and saved you the immense frustration of seeing your coop full of unproductive birds a year from now. Make smart decisions based on real data, not on wishful thinking. To your success, fellow breeder. Until next time.